Welcome back everybody, this is James White with Freaking Reviews and today I'm taking a look at the Ninja Creamy which is a multifunction ice cream maker to see if it really works. That's today's video. So I've just finished about two weeks of using the Creamy so you're going to see my entire process throughout this video but let's first look back at my unboxing. Let's see what we got here. We got all the literature, that sounds good. Ugh. We're getting there. Right, so over here, it looks like we've got a couple of containers and a lid. It must be an extra lid. It's well packaged. It's very well packaged. It has a, a, a brand new electronic smell to it. Pieces here to take off. Well, here is the uh, here is the unboxed unit. We got everything here. The buttons are ice cream, sorbet, light ice cream, smoothie bowl, gelato, milkshake, mix in, power button, and respin. So I read the instructions over. This is pretty simple. It seems more difficult when you haven't tried it yet, but it comes up here and snaps into place like that. This button right here releases it. Down, comes off, no problem. So this lid is pretty simple. All you have to do is just twist it to unlock. This you install in there. All you have to do is push this latch over. It goes in pretty easily. So with that said, now all we have to do is wash this out and get started. So the first thing I wanted to try was ice cream since I figured that's how most people are gonna be using it. Now for ice cream, what you're supposed to do is create a base of something like vanilla or chocolate, and then you can add your mix-ins after it's been blended. The way you add mix-ins is you dig a hole with a spoon, you put your mix-ins in there, and then you run the mix-in program. You have to be careful what you put in there because as they state, it's not a blender, it's a mixer. So if you want something like small fruit pieces, you're gonna have to put small fruit pieces in there. You can't put big chunks expecting it to blend it up, but that won't happen. So for my first test, I went with vanilla ice cream as the base, and I added chocolate chips as the mix-in, and here's what happened. All right, so I'm gonna do the easiest recipe I can, the very first one in the book, which is the vanilla ice cream with chocolate chips. If I can't do this one right, I might as well not try anything else because this is going to be the easiest one we got. So following the recipe here, I already have the cream cheese. I just put it on in the microwave for 10 seconds. Next up, add sugar and vanilla extract. One third cup of sugar, one teaspoon vanilla extract. I'm using my chef wizard as my whisk. All right, this is supposed to look like frosting. I would say uh, it looks like frosting. All right, step one was easy enough. Step two, slowly mix in the heavy cream and milk until fully combined and sugar is dissolved. Heavy cream, yummy. And some milk. Here we go, pour the base into the pint. All right, storage lid. Now I place this in the freezer for 24 hours and then we start mixing. They say to put it on a flat surface, so make sure it is a flat surface. We'll see you in 24 hours. All right, that was actually pretty simple, so now it's time to wait and see what happens tomorrow. We shall see. Remove lid from pint. Here we go. Place the pint in the outer bowl. Just like this, I think. Install the creamerizer paddle. I'm assuming that's got to be what this is. Oh, the paddle is locked and loaded. Place it on here and then we spin until it raises up in there. Oh, oh it's locked in place. It's locked. It's ready to go. Ice cream button. It sounds like a blender. I don't really see much happening. Oh, now it's starting to happen. It looks like it's counting down something here. It's on a timer of some sort. Whoa. It's kind of loud. Kind of loud. We'll just slow it down. That was kind of loud. I'm not gonna lie, that was kind of loud. Well, they don't stay it, but I assume for step six, you have to take it out of there first. So press this, twist it out. There we go, different, different texture than I expected. All right, the top looks a bit crumbly, but you know, not bad, we'll see. So now I gotta t I get a spoon and dig a hole all the way to the bottom. Oh, it's kind of crumbly though. It's gonna be keep, it keeps falling back in there. Ugh. I got a hole that's not perfectly centered. I hope it doesn't matter because that's what I'm going with. 
Add chocolate chips to the hole. Let's see what we got here. All right, put it back in there so we shall see. All right, this time I gotta press the mix in button and see how that goes. Time for the mix in. I don't see a lot of mixing. We'll see. I mean, this is just my first test. This is more of my warm up test of ice cream. So if it's not right, I'll have to go back to the drawing board and see what I did wrong. But let's see what happens. And the big reveal. Oh, you know, it doesn't look bad. It doesn't look bad. I'm, I'm actually quite shocked. It looks, it looks like pretty good ice cream. Let's see. The texture is just right. Huh. I wasn't sure if it was going to come out right, but it looks good. Let's see how it tastes. Mm. The instructions did call for mini chocolate chips. I used full size because I couldn't find any minis. That aside, the texture and the taste of the ice cream is absolutely perfect. So I'm, I'm a little surprised, I'm a little shocked, and I'm very happy about it. Now that my first test wasn't an utter failure, let's go to the recipe book, find something else, and see how it goes. All right, so the ice cream went pretty well. I was noticing as I was looking for the next recipe that it does say if your ice cream is kind of crumbly, like mine was first out of the freezer, to put it in the respin cycle and it'll fix it. It also says if you use a mix-in, that'll also fix it as well. So I fixed it without even realizing I was fixing it, but it's good to know. So after the success of my first batch of ice cream, I wanted to try something that they're showing in their promotional videos, which is a can of pineapple chunks in syrup. You basically just put it in the pint, you freeze it, and make it into a sorbet, and it actually worked. One thing I noticed about this sorbet recipe is there's a little tip saying if you use fruit with just water, it could damage the unit. There's a lot of things that can supposedly damage the unit, so you gotta be careful. There are some fresh fruit sorbet recipes later on, but we're sticking with the can for right now because it's supposed to be easy. When we're starting easy and working our way up. Step one, fill up to the max line with fruit chunks. In this case, we pineapple. All right, that's uh, right to the fill line. Now it says to cover the fruit with the juice, so I'm gonna do that as well. I guess I could have just dumped this can in there. So all we do is place the lid on there and stick that in the freezer for 24 hours and this is supposed to make a sorbet, we shall see. All right, we'll come back in 24 hours. All right, this is gonna be an interesting one, so we'll come back in 24 hours and see how it goes. All right, it's been 24 hours. Let's check and see how the pineapple looks out of the freezer. Let's see what we got here. But hard as a rock, look at that, wow. If it's crumbly, I hit the respin button. Otherwise, it's good to go. Here we go, sorbet time. Well, it's, it's slowly working its way down there. We got some time to go. Maybe it's gonna work. We shall see. And now it's going slower. I don't know what to expect. I mean, it, I don't know what to expect. We'll see. Oh, wow. It looks, it looks better than I thought it was going to. Let's see what it looks like here. Oh, wow. I'm not a little bit shocked. I'm actually very shocked at this one. Let me see. Hmm. It does taste like a very strong pineapple sorbet. Even the texture is good. It's not crumbly like they th said it might be. It looks, it looks beautiful. Look at that. Wow. Am I the only one who's shocked here? Are you shocked? I'm, I'm pretty shocked here. Hmm. A very creamy texture. It's just, it's very good, I think. All right, so for my next test, I wanted to try one of their light ice cream recipes. The recipe was actually pretty good. But what I also wanted to do is, as soon as I finished my ice cream, I wanted to turn it into a milkshake. And here's how that went. The next preset to try out is the light ice cream mode. And I've got the first recipe here for light chocolate ice cream. I will put the ingredients over here on the screen and let you see what I'm seeing, but uh, let's get started mixing it up and see what happens. First up, whisk until smooth, three quarter cup of unsweetened coconut cream. Three tablespoons of monk fruit sweetener. One, two, three. Two tablespoons of dark cocoa powder. One tablespoon of raw agave nectar. A Little bit of vanilla extract. We now whisk with my chef wizard. Three quarters cup chocolate oat milk and then combine. It's very chocolatey at least. It's very chocolatey. Pour it in the container and let it sit for 24 hours. There we go. 
Come back in one day and see how this goes. All right, I just pull out of the freezer. It's been more than 24 hours. Let's check it out. That's, that's hard as a rock. Got the instruction booklet here. Let's see, we have to uh, remove the cover, assemble the unit. All I have to do now is select the light ice cream function and hope that it comes out. Pressing the light ice cream function. earplugs for this one but let's see how it turned out well it looks pretty good let's see how it tastes it doesn't really have much of an ice cream texture to it. I think if it's crumbly you're supposed to hit uh, the respin button I have not tried the respin button yet so this is a good opportunity to try it out they say if it's too crumbly to try the respin let's see what happens let's try the respin noises in there. The unit's kind of shaking a little bit. Here we go, my first respin. And oh there we go. Oh yeah look at this. Much more ice cream like. It definitely seemed to whip it into an ice cream texture. That is much more like ice cream. It's amazing that it was crumbly before now it's perfect. Now for the most important part the taste test. Mmm. Mmm. Oh wow, that's really good. Mmm. Wow, that is phenomenal. That's so good. That's uh, I'm I'm shocked how good that is. I'm, I'm I'm kind of an ice cream fan, but man, is that good. Let's do some more of this first. That's, that's honestly some of the best ice cream I think I've ever had. It's that good. Well, since I have all this chocolate ice cream, I think I'm just going to move the milkshake function. That's something I don't have to wait 24 hours for. So let me add some milk to this and see how the milkshake function actually works. All right, according to the instructions, all I have to do is dig out a hole, put a half a cup of milk in there, and put the milkshake function on, and I'll have a nice milkshake. Let's try it out. Because I ate a little bit, I don't think I even really have to take the ice cream out. I think I just have to just kind of make a, like push it aside. I've got kind of a hole in there. It should be good enough. It says all you have to do is create a hole, add milk, process again using the milkshake program. Very simple. We got a half a cup of milk. That's what I'm seeing. The milk is mostly in the hole, and uh, you know, I guess we'll see what happens. I'm getting faster at this loading process. That's good. And here we go. Wow. Oh, it slowed down. Interesting. There we go. All right, I have no idea what to expect. Oh, it looks kind of like a milkshake. It looks very thick. I may have to get it started here. Oh yeah, there we go. So far, the only problem I've had is, uh, is trying to dump this uh, in, in this glass in front of the camera and doing it properly. All right, this is a pretty thick milkshake. They say you can keep uh, adding milk and hitting the respin button, but I'm not going to do that. Here's what we got. That's a nice, thick milkshake. Oh man, is that good. Now I'm not just hamming this up for the camera. This chocolate ice cream converted into milkshake is some of the best I think I've ever, I've ever had. This, this is quite impressive. Wow, since that was so good, I'm going to have to make another batch of this to show everybody else how good it was because I'm going to end up eating all of it. At this point, I was getting a little more familiar with it, so I wanted to speed things up by prepping two recipes at the same time, both using fresh fruit, and both went pretty well. Check it out. I'm going to try this fresh fruit sorbet, which the only ingredient for this one is just bananas. I can do that, I hope. I've got some bananas cut up here. They say to have about around half inch slices. You're supposed to fill up this pint, smash it down and keep filling, and then that's it. Sounds easy enough, let's try it out. First thing you're supposed to do is fill to the max fill line, which is about right there. 
Then they say with a heavy utensil such as a ladle or potato masher, I'll try my very heavy Z-roll ice cream scoop. You're supposed to firmly pr press, compacting them down and keep adding more. All right, well, that's round one. Let's try a second round of this. All right, well, it seems to be below the max fill line. We have smashed bananas. All right, that's all you're supposed to do. You're supposed to just cover it up, put it in the freezer, and then tomorrow, let's just see what happens. This one is done. Next up is a coconut mango smoothie bowl. Sounds easy enough, only two ingredients. Got some fresh mango right here. This is cut to approximately one inch pieces like the recipe calls for. And we've got some coconut milk, which I've just opened up and stirred. Step one, fill it with mango pieces. Cover the mangoes with the coconut milk. So let me cover this up. In 24 hours, we're gonna try our coconut smoothie bowl and our banana fresh fruit sorbet. And this is the last two before I do my final ice cream test. All right, it's been 24 hours. They're both out of the freezer, both hard as a rock. Let's try it out. Let's start with the banana sorbet first. It looks uh, it's, it's quite frozen. All right, sorbet button, and it should be done. Here we go. All right, that's kind of loud. Let's try it out. Pretty hard consistency. Let me, uh, let me give it a shot. Just banana, let's see. Mmm. Mmm. Surprising. It is it's just banana. All right, we're getting close to the end here. We've got a couple more things to do. Let's try the smoothie bowl. This is mango and coconut milk, hard as a rock. All right, the pine is going in there. I remember the first time I did that, I was kind of slow at it. Now I'm an old pro at it. Now all I have to do is touch the smoothie bowl button and we should be good to go. Let's try it. Here we go. Very loud. It is quite loud, but let's see how it turned out. Now this one looks crumbly again, so I think I'm gonna do the, uh, the re-spin button. Very crumbly. Time to re-spin. Here we go. Very loud. It still is kinda crumbly. I think I'm gonna do the re-spin one more time. It's a bit crumbly for me. Respin number two. <clears throat> All right, this isn't it. I'm gonna go with it. I'm not gonna keep respinning it, but hopefully this is good enough. Right, it doesn't look as crumbly. I think we got a good crumble uh, ratio here. All right, I'm gonna transfer this into a bowl here. I'm not sure if the texture is, is what I expected. It, it's it's, I don't know. I don't know what I expected. Let me throw on some garnishments and see how it turned out. Some coconut, some sliced almonds, and some sliced strawberries. Uh, I mean, sure, it, it looks really nice, but does it taste good? That's what we gotta find out. Try to get a little bit of everything in one bite here. Down the hatch. It's very cold. It's very cold. It tastes good though. It's a very strong mango flavor. I'll try one more bite. I could put some more garnishments on there, probably more coconut, but it's good. Well, I think that turned out really nice. I've bought smoothie bowls that weren't this good before, so I think they did a pretty good job with this one. We got one more to do and then wrap this thing up. 
So for my last recipe, since I start with ice cream, I wanted to finish with ice cream. And since I already made vanilla and chocolate, I figured strawberry was the next logical choice. Plus it used fresh fruit as well. So here's how that went. I've already made vanilla, I've made chocolate. I want to make strawberry because strawberry is the next most popular and also it uses fresh fruit. I'm going off the directions here. It says in a large bowl, add strawberries. One and a half cups of strawberries, trimmed cut in quarters. Half cup granulated sugar. One teaspoon of light corn syrup. One teaspoon of lemon juice. Using a fork, now I'm supposed to mash the strawberries. So I'll start mashing. These are fresh strawberries, not frozen, so shouldn't be too hard to mash them. So I've got to let this sit for 10 minutes while stirring and I'll come back and do the next step. All right, I've been stirring it. It's been sitting for 10 minutes. I'm ready to add the cream and then put it in the freezer. Add heavy cream and mix until well combined. All right, now I just gotta pour it in a pint and freeze it. This isn't the best pouring bowl, but I can probably deal with it here. There's our pint, almost pint of what will it be? Strawberry ice cream. All right, so I'll come back in 24 hours for my final reveal of my final ice cream with the Ninja Creamy, and then we'll wrap this thing up. All right, it's been 24 hours for my final ice cream test. Let's check it out. As expected, it's hard as a rock. I will say I've gotten much faster at this process over time, which I guess is not unusual, but it's nice to know that it does speed up after the first time. The first time seems a little bit overwhelming. After a while, it becomes pretty easy. Alright, so just gotta hit ice cream and then wait. Here we go. Now we wait. Alright, let's take a look at this, see how it turned out. I don't think that's too crumbly. It sure looks like strawberry ice cream. Let's see. It feels like strawberry ice cream. Here we go. Mmm. That's just really good strawberry ice cream. I thought there was going to be pretty big chunks in there. There aren't. Overall, look at that. It looks beautiful. Well, once again, every time I've made ice cream on here, I was kind of a little worried. I mean, it's not going to turn out right, but every time it turned out great. So I think I have enough information to wrap this thing up. All right, so as far as pros and cons of the Ninja Creamy go, I would say the pros are that it's very easy to use. Everything I made in there turned out exactly as I hoped it would, actually maybe better. If you eliminate the freezing time, which is 24 hours, the prep time plus the blending time is actually pretty quick. I mean, it's a few minutes of prep and a couple minutes of blending and that's it. If you don't mind that 24 hour wait, it's actually a pretty quick process. I've got a few cons for this, but I'm not sure they outweigh the pros, but the cons would be that it's kind of big, loud, and expensive. You're going to expect to pay 150 to 200 bucks for this depending on what model you use and if you use a coupon somewhere. You can't really make large quantities at once. I guess you could make three pints of the same thing if you triple the recipe, but you really can't make a big batch of ice cream. The final con is that it's not a blender, it's a mixer, which that's not really a con itself, but the there's a few places in the recipe guide and in the instruction booklet that say if you don't do it right, you could damage the unit. So you have to be really careful what you put in there because it seems it's kind of sensitive to things that aren't supposed to go in there. But overall, I think the Ninja Creamy far exceeded my expectations. I'm not much of an ice cream maker. I don't really know what my expectations were, but they were exceeded because this is a great product. If you've used a Ninja Creamy, tell me what you think in the comments below. I appreciate you watching and I'll see you next time.